What up guys, Matt from liquidfungi.com and I am here checking out our atmospheric steam sterilizers. Uh, this is, uh, these are some systems that we built. We built a couple of these a few years back. They're made out of 55 gallon stainless steel drums that have uh, been wrapped in insulation. And then we've got 15 gallon stainless steel drums on the bottom that are the actual boilers. And you can see they've got the 220 element plugged in there and we've got 220, uh, sockets that were put in here to, to run all this stuff. So, uh, I want to do a little bit longer video on some of the more detailed pieces of this because I've had a lot of people asking me, including Curtis. Curtis, shout out, man. Yo, and uh, a lot of people have been asking me how we built these and about the details of them. So I'm going to go over some of the more fine details of these uh, sterilizers that we, we built. So first off, we started with a stainless steel 55-gallon drum. And if you look inside this thing, you'll see we've got these little spacers, these two by fours that we use as spacers for all the shelves, which are made of these perforated anodized hard uh, baking sheets. And I will leave a link to where you can get those in the video as well here on YouTube. You can take out the bottom one here and you can see it's a little dirty down there, but, uh, but essentially we just got them propped up on a few two by fours to keep it up off the ground. And uh, the way that this port's done, it's it's uh, pretty much just done with a with a bulkhead, a stainless steel bulkhead, and uh, then we're using a tube uh, with those same bulkheads to connect. Using uh, this is intercooler tube from a car turbo, essentially is what it is. And you'll notice on a few things. Here's another little detail that is uh, that kind of escapes people, but you'll see we have like an injection port that's drilled into the side here, and that's actually a safety measure. Uh, so if this thing ever builds up pressure inside of it for any reason, like this gets clogged or melts or whatever, uh, it'll pop this out first. That'll actually pop out. There is a hole in that stainless steel and it'll blow this thing out. So it's in there pretty tight. Uh, and since this is an atmospheric steam sterilizer, it shouldn't build a lot of pressure. But if it ever did, uh, that's a safety measure. It'll pop that cork first. And we also have those in the lids, if you didn't notice. So if there's ever a pressure build up in the lid because maybe these little holes get clogged or something gets pressed against them, it'll pop that cork in the center. And those are just safety measures we installed uh, to make sure that they would, you know, wouldn't hurt anybody or blow up in here. Uh, very simple to do. Uh, definitely worth the investment of doing a couple more holes. Now drilling this crap is a real pain in the butt. So uh, the first thing you're going to need to do is get some carbide drill uh, hole saws and, uh, and some milling oil and just take your time and take it real slow. All these holes are really, really tough to drill out on these things. I probably spent a half an hour on each hole on each barrel. I mean, it, it was, it's intense. So you just got to take your time, take it slow and uh, do a little bit of time. Make sure you keep applying the milling oil and just work your way through it. Uh, so you'll see here, this is a little bend here. This is our temperature sensor here. Uh, so it is a little bent, but we have temperature sensors that are in the top of these barrels uh, that sense the temp up at the top. Uh, and we uh, utilize that as just the regulation, just to regulate the temperature. Now, we've done a lot of tests with these. We run them at about 180 uh, and for the temperature on here. And once it gets up to 180 here, it holds, uh, it'll hold the temperature for a specific amount of time using these machines here. And these were initially designed for powder coating. Let's turn one on and you'll see uh, how these work. But essentially what this is saying is currently it's 80 degrees on this temperature sensor here. And you can see if I hold it, it'll start going up from my temperature, you know, right there. Uh, but the temperature sensor there senses the temperature and then uh, it will heat up the the, the uh, element down there, the 220 element, heat up the boiler and boil water down there. So these are hooked up to water lines as well. And you can see the hard water line that we've got running in here to these. So uh, they, the boilers auto fill and they're on float valves. Uh, so we pretty much just turn the water on and, and let them go and they'll, and they actually work through very little water. If I would have known this at the beginning, I probably wouldn't even ran water lines because filling up this 15 gallon, uh, it doesn't even run through the amount of water that that 15 gallon has on a single run, no matter if we're running hardwood or whatever. Now you can hear the element in there heating up. 
and that's the element, the heating element heating up. And you'll see it's set for 650 minutes right now, which is what we typically run our rye berries for, our one pound rye berries like we've got in here right now from last night's run. So uh, this is, we usually run for 650 minutes. But if you want to know what different stuff we do, this is different stuff um, that we have sterilized. So we have our standard one pound rye berries and three pound rye berries are all in one blocks, which we've stopped uh, making those all together, but, uh, and the compost, we've, we've pretty much, we only do rye berries and hardwood now. Um, and the reason we stopped doing the all one and sifted compost and, uh, is we did use them internally for a lot of our mushroom testing and doing morels and portobellas and things like that. But unfortunately, it did not sell often. And when we stopped doing our internal testing, we no longer needed those things. So really, the only things that sell are rye berries and our hardwood blocks. And so those are the ones we use the most. You see, this is where we hang our perforated sheets. And uh, so a little bit more details about these. Um, I picked these up on eBay. I'm not sure where uh, where anybody. If you got a place locally, it's probably much better than having uh, pay the shipping for them. But I actually got a real good deal on eBay because I bought quite a few of them at one time. And the the gentleman that sold them to me, we you know, kind of we kind of worked out something since you could ship the smaller ones inside the bigger ones. Um, and so we've we've got a. Most of the uh, most of our sterilization is done through the atmospheric steam sterilizers. Although we do use all our autoclave here, our Totner uh, for instrumentation and for liquid culture. So we don't do liquid culture. We do do our instruments in these sterilizers. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Now we run these at 180 for both substrates, and I guess it depends on what you're really doing. Uh, you could run them as high as, you know, 200 to 220, I'm guessing. I haven't tried running them that high, uh, but I know that, you know, this turbo pipe and that stuff will all last up into those temperatures. So my, my only concern with, you know, running, I prefer to run it at a lower temperature for a longer period of time. And the general reasoning behind that is because as uh, we are selling it as an external product, the way that the product looks makes a big difference. So if we we're running these at higher heat in shorter temperatures, the bags would come out, um, they come out a lot more deformed, uh, a lot more frayed, a lot harder. And also the rye berries in there, for example, in this case, since we're doing rye berries, would actually explode and be bursted. And you can see inside of our bags here, we have very few bursted rye berries. Um, and that is because we, uh, we take the time to do it slow and low. And slow and low is the tempo with this kind of thing. So if you're gonna be, you know, sterilizing rye berries especially, uh, plan on doing it really slow at 180 to, you know, 170 to 180 temperature range and doing it for a long period of time because it's, uh, it's much better to go that route than to do them fast and hot. Now you can get away with doing stuff fast and hot, but it is gonna deform your bags more. You're gonna see more bursted berries. And that's fine if you're doing it for your own personal use, because honestly, it's gonna affect things very little on the front of, uh, you might have a couple more fail, bag failures or something, but it's gonna affect very little on the front of how things function. But if you're selling them as a product, you gotta be really concerned about how things look. And so since we sell a lot of this as product, we're very concerned with how it looks as well as how it functions. So, all right, well, that's pretty much it, man. Here's a quick 10-minute overview of our atmospheric steam sterilization system. If you guys have any more questions, you know, let me know. Uh, you can always hit us up, liquidfungi.com. Peace, y'all.